Do you ever read papers where on the x-axis they have really long labels and so they put them at an angle or maybe 90 degrees and you're you're just gonna kind of have to crane your neck and then for the rest of the day after you read that paper well you're kind of like this. Yeah well in today's episode of Code Club we'll see what we can do about that. Ah my neck. <laughs> That is not a great practice, but too often I think we are left feeling like we don't have many options. Well, in today's episode of Code Club, we're going to look at long axis labels and what we can do to make them better. In previous episodes, we created a plot where the labels on the x-axis are rather long, and my solution at the time was to put in line breaks to kind of make them go over three lines, and that way they wouldn't be so long that they overlap. We wouldn't have to put them on an angle. We'll revisit all those different approaches and we'll throw those by the side and I'll show you an even better approach at the end. So be sure you stay tuned all the way through. All right, folks, here's my code here in our studio, um, schubertdiversity.r. Again, remember, if you want this starting code, go down below in the description. You'll find a link to a blog post for today's episode where you can get this starting code chunk. Also, if you want the data, you want to see how to install our Studio R, get the packages I'm using. Be sure you check the video that's linked above. That will tell you everything you need to, do to get going. Very good. So again, this is my schubertdiversity.r script, um, leaving off basically where we were at the end of the last episode. Um, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. It's not required. Uh, let me go ahead and run this so you can see what we get in the end. This is where we left off at the end of the last episode. More or less, I did change one subtle thing, and that was to remove my line breaks here on the x-axis labels. And so you can see the problem, right? These labels are rather long, and we'd rather them not be so long. So what can we do? Well, the solution that most people take is to rotate those labels so that they're easier to see and so that they don't run over each other. There's a couple ways that we have to, to solve that problem of getting the rotation. So let's go ahead back to our code. And if we come down here um, to our element markdown for axis text X, uh, and if you're using element markdown or element text, it doesn't matter. The argument's gonna be the same that we could put in angle equals 45, and that will rotate the text 45 degrees. So let's give this a run and see what we get. Sure enough, we've now rotated them 45 degrees, but something you'll notice is that the label is centered um, at where it crosses the X axis, right? And what we'd rather have it be is perhaps right justified. So the right end of the label is down here at, at uh, where it crosses the x-axis. How do we do that? I thought you'd never ask. So sure enough, down here, we can do h just. So h just is horizontal justification. There's also v just for vertical justification. So let's do h just equals zero. I always get my zero and one confused. Um, I think though this is gonna be left justified and sure enough, it, you'll see that it is left justified. So let's do one instead, and that should make it right justified. And sure enough, we now see that our labels are right justified and um, are, are, are pretty well justified. Again, we have this problem, I guess, for the way you're seeing it, you're gonna again crane your neck. Um, and, and you can play with this angle, you know, if you want it to be 90 degrees so that it's up and down. Um, I think as people get more labels and more things across the x-axis, that angle kind of shifts to end up being more vertical uh, to the point where you're, you're really just kind of <laughs> tilting everything. So an alternative to setting the angle and the H just in element markdown or element text is to come back up to scale X discrete and to do guide equals, and then we'll do guide axis angle equals 45. And so this will set the angle for us as well as the justification. We now see that we've got that angle set for us and of course, we could do any angle that we want here in this guide axis. We can, you know, do 60, uh, and we'll get a steeper angle to everything. And and things start getting pretty messy, right? Let me get rid of that. Um, a, another nice feature within guide axis is that you can give it the option n dot dodge. And what n dot dodge does is you give it a number, and it basically makes different rows for each of your uh, labels. And so if you say n dodge equals two, then you get two rows and it'll dodge 
uh, reposition your x-axis labels so that there's two rows. Let me see, show you what we mean. So what we see in this output is that we now have two rows of x-axis labels. They no longer overlap with each other. However, this third one, the C diff positive one, does run off the right side of the figure. But what we've got are two rows of labels. So healthy and diarrhea plus C diff. And then in the second row, diarrhea and C diff negative. Um, I'm sure this works in some situations, but in this situation, I'm really not feeling it. Um, it. It's still quite long and kind of gets kind of messy here in the text. So let's go ahead and put the line breaks back in. I am using element markdown, which allows me to insert HTML uh, into the labels. And, um, and so what I can do here is I can use the BR tag, uh, which is a line break in HTML. If you were using element text, you would use backslash N instead of BR. So I'll put another BR here uh, and I'll copy this and, and paste it in to put my N on the on a third row. So I'll go ahead and run that and see what things look like. And I still have my dodge on, but you can see that I have those over the different line breaks. Let me replace N dodge with angle equals 45. Again, to show you what this looks like with a little bit more compact representation. And that looks a little bit better. I'm still craning my neck to see what it looks like or see what I'm reading. Uh, again, if I did angle equals 90, again, you're craning your neck so that you can um, see what's going on. The other thing that I'm noticing is that as the label gets longer or the angle gets more steep, um, it is adjusting the y-axis, but my text um, that I have to indicate significance is getting more and more compressed. Uh, so I would, if I if I went with this, I'd have to go back and readjust the position of those things. Looking at this, I'm reminded of an episode I did previously <laughs> on the Z pattern, and that when we approach a figure, at least in Western cultures, we read the figure in a Z orientation. And as I was thinking about this figure and thinking about um, the Z pattern, I was thinking, well, the information that's important is actually at the bottom. <laughs> um, and you know, if we if we could perhaps rotate our plot, say 90 degrees, that that would be pretty slick because then I could have I could have my x-axis labels on the left side, and because they're long, I can read them without craning my neck, um, and I then have the important information about you know what the different groups are on the left, and then I can see across to the right the different values of what's going on. So let's give that a shot. Something that we might end up doing in the end is we could rewrite our ggplot to switch our x and y. But say we're not really ready to make that type of investment, how might we change things? Well, I'm going to come down to the bottom here and I'm going to add chord flip. And what chord flip will do is flip <laughs> my coordinates 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see what we get. And so what we see is that it's flipped at 90 degrees couple problems though. First of all, uh, my x-axis labels um, are definitely running over each other and I think that's because I forgot to turn off the angle equals 90 in that uh, guide underscore axis function. Also before I had um, my healthy in the first column followed by uh, diarrhea c diff negative followed by c diff positive. So my order here is all out of whack. Also I've got my uh, significance indicators you know, they're kind of in the wrong place. So let's see if we can't clean this up a little bit. First thing we can do is let's get rid of that angle equals 90. And I will also then come down and access text Y. And so that already looks better. I'm not craning my neck. It's a lot cleaner to read, I think. So the next thing that I want to take on is the order of my three groups. I, I think I like this and so I'm going to stick with it. So I think I want healthy up top, followed by C di uh, diarrhea and C diff negative and finally diarrhea and C diff positive. I set the order for that up here where I was reading in metadata and define disease stat as a factor and I set these levels. So I could copy and paste and, and change the order of these things or I can use the rev function which is short for reverse. So to show you how that works, if I run rev, oh, if I run rev down here at my prompt, then I get case diarrheal control, non-diarrheal control. It reverses the order of everything. So I'll go ahead and run everything again and those three groups should be flipped. Sure enough, I now have healthy, 
diarrhea and CDF negative, diarrhea and CDF positive. So the next problem is that my indicators of significance are now in the wrong place. This bar and the NS need to be dropped down, and this bar and the star need to be raised up. If we come back down here to where we are adding those things, um, at position 2, 3, which was position 2, 3 on the x-axis, is now position 2, 3 on the y-axis. This starts getting confusing. We'll come back to that. Um, I'm going to change this now to 1, 2, and I'm going to put NS at 1.5. So let's do little steps. We'll give this a run, and we now see that we have NS and our bar at the right place. So the next thing I want to do is move this bar and the star up. And so that is going to start, instead of at 1, it's going to start at 3 and come down to 1.5. So we now want to move the star. And so that's going to be midway between 3 and 1 and a half, 2.25. And sure enough, we've got our star. I just want to bump that star and the NS over a smidge. So I'll put that to 25 and this to 34.5. And I think we'll be in good shape now. So that looks great. Um, again, I think this is a lot more readable. Sure, <laughs> we can turn the angle on our axis labels, but should we? Hmm, um, I kind of think not. Something that you might also want to play with is where do we justify these labels? What we could do, again, is we could say h just equals zero, and we see that that's now left justified. I still, I, I kind of liked it the other way where it was right justified because now we have this big gap between healthy and the axis. So maybe we'll leave it um, the default, which was h just equals one. So one last thing that I'm thinking about with this figure um, that would maybe make it read a little bit better, but again, it's gonna be a little bit different than what we're used to, is this x axis label, which is really, you'll recall the y axis label, is on the bottom. And so I have to look through all this stuff before I look to the bottom and see what it is. What if I actually put this up at the top? How would I go about doing that? Well, it's actually not that hard. What we can do is we can add a scale Y continuous. And so we'll recall that because we flipped the coordinates scheme, um, what's Y is now X and what's left, we actually want on the right because that's gonna be on the top. Staying with me? <laughs> so we can do position equals right. And that will put it on the right and then it will flip it and it should be on the top, voila. Well, what do you think? I, I think this is kind of cool. Um, another way that we could have gotten to this is perhaps by having a title across the top, telling people what they're looking at in terms of what variable we're plotting. Uh, again, for scientific publications, we generally don't have titles at the top of each of our panels in a paper. Um, I kind of like this. Um, I know it's quite a bit different than what people are used to seeing. We're used to having that X axis at the bottom. Um, but again, it shows the reader immediately what we're looking at. Let me know down below in the comments. Do you, do you like this look with the X axis on the top or on the bottom? Um, I, I think I, I'm kind of liking this a little bit um, and kind of excited about it. But at the same time, I know that this is gonna be really different for my audience um, to think about. One thing that I'm noticing as I talk to you and to think through the logic now of how we're working with this plot is that everything is different, right? So right is really top, X is really Y, Y is really X. Um, it gets confusing. And so while chord flip might be useful for um, exploring our data, long term, it's gonna be a pain, right? It's really gonna cause problems as we're trying to think through and ma maintain our code long term. So what would I do? Well, I actually would probably at this point get rid of chord flip and change everything to get it to look the way I want using kind of naming things the way they're supposed to be named. So I'm gonna go through that with you to show you how we would do it without using chord flip. And so what we'll do basically is everywhere we have an X, we'll change it to a Y. And so I expect errors as we go through because things are gonna get a little bit sloppy. Um, and so again, wherever I have an X, I'm gonna put a Y and a Y and X. And we'll see if we can do this with minimal problems. So again, instead of right, we're now gonna be top. Um, this all looks good. Um, and then this is going to be axis text Y. So again, here is a situation where it gets kind of confusing because the text is on the Y axis, but we used chord flip. 
and we define the text on the x-axis. Ah, so this is a case where we still want it to be axis, axis text y, and I think we're in good there. Here now we want to change our x and y, um, and uh, y, ah, y and x, y, x, y, x, and I think we're good. So we'll give this a run. Again, something that, you know, I, I think we could quibble about is where do we want that x-axis label? Do we want it on the top or in the default position on the bottom? Um, in terms of readability, I kind of like it up at the top here because it's immediately clear what you're looking at. Sure, you know, it doesn't take much to look to the bottom and see, you know, it's inverse Simpson index. Um, but I do kind of like having everything referenced at that top row, right? Like I'm using healthy as my reference position that I want my audience to compare everything back to. So why not also have the default values of those index reference values for the inverse Simpson index also at the top? Eh, you know, I could go either way. Again, let me know down below what you think. Let's take some time and compare these two representations of the same data. In the original version, um, again, I had long, long labels, but I think the, the better look for this would be to kind of wrap those labels like we ended up, but leaving them um, on the X axis. And I, so I think this is a clean representation. So the problem with the angled version is that, um, again, you have to kind of crane your neck to the side to read it and to understand what's going on. Um, that's not so desirable. Also, one of the things that was in the back of my mind as I approached this problem was this idea of the Z pattern and that we like to read things in a Z pattern or if not a Z, more of like an F, um, where again, we kind of go left to right and kind of moving down. I think this new representation of the, of the data really embodies and encapsulates that Z pattern or the F pattern um, as um, again, I can read across to see I'm looking at the inverse Simpson X index. I can see the value range for my um, X axis. And then I can look at healthy. I can then look at diarrhea and C diff negative, diarrhea and C diff positive. And I don't have to crane my neck to the side to figure out what's going on. I really prefer this new version a lot more to the other. I'm surprised at how much more I like it. Um, again, let me know uh, what you think and if you like this better. I know sometimes in this field of microbial ecology, we can tend to have very long variable names um, on that X axis where we might have some bacterial uh, name, uh, so, you know, Bacillus subtilis or Escherichia coli. And then in parentheses, we might put, you know, some, some name or O2 designation or some other bit of information. And so those, act, those labels can get really long. And so flipping the coordinates like this really improves the readability. So you don't have to read about changing things on the angle. That being said, if you do need to move things on an angle or dodge things, you can do that using the guide axis function in scale X discrete. Um, or you can do some of that also in the theme function for the, the axis text. And we also saw how you could use chord flip to flip the X and Y axes. But <laughs> in the long run, that gets difficult to maintain because it's hard to think about what's left, what's up, what's down, what's X, what's Y. And so if you like the flipped orientation, I would encourage you to go back and recode your figure while it's still relatively simple and while you remember what you're looking at so that X means X, Y means Y. We're make making our yes mean yes and our no mean no, right? Anyway, I hope you found this episode interesting and transformative, I dare say. Um, I want to remind you that I started with a critique, right? That there's something that just gnawed at me about the figure. And so by working through that critique and always trying to make it better, I think that we have come upon a figure in the end that regardless of where you think that X axis belongs is a lot more readable and interpretable than when we had originally. Again, always be willing to critique what you're working with and share what you've done with your friends and um, and other people that, that you know might be stakeholders, so to speak, in how to interpret those results. Anyway, enough said. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to share this with your friend. If you're a student or a postdoc, I'd be really intrigued if you share these two visuals with your PI. Ask them what they prefer. Do they prefer having the columns vertical with labels at the bottom, or do they prefer having the columns go to the right with the labels on the left? Ask your PI what they think. Um, and, and again, let me know down below uh, what you find out. Anyway, 
See you next time for another episode of Code Club.